Assalamualaikum and welcome to our segment on Surah Ibrahim. Inshallah, today we will cover the sixth ruku of Surah Ibrahim, verses 35 to 41. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the true meanings of the Quran by the grace of His Prophet Muhammad. Amin. With this dua, let's begin the sixth ruku of Surah Ibrahim. Verses 35 and 36. And when said Ibrahim, My Lord, make this city secure and keep me and my sons away from worshipping idols. My Lord, indeed, they have led astray many among the mankind. So whoever follows me, then indeed he is of me. And whoever disobeys me, then indeed you are forgiving and merciful. In this ruku, we learn about Prophet Ibrahim's supplication to Allah, along with his character. He implores Allah to create a safe environment for himself, his sons, and all those who follow him, a place where they can live in complete submission to Allah and rely on him entirely. This environment should be free from shirk and any attachment to the material world, which can easily distract mankind. Throughout the Quran, we are reminded of the story of Prophet Ibrahim salam. His people had a tendency to resort to idol worship instead of Allah, despite Prophet Ibrahim's persistent efforts to convince them otherwise. His message was simple and consistent. There is only one God, Allah, creator and maintainer of the entire universe. We should seek his help and guidance in all matters, and we will all eventually return to him. Prophet Ibrahim salam supplication is also mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, in verse 126, where he says, And when Ibrahim said, My Lord, make this a secure city and provide its people with fruits, whomever of them believes in Allah and the last day. However, despite Prophet Ibrahim salam's efforts, his people were not willing to change their ways. As mentioned in Surah Ashura, verses 69 to 71, where it says, And recite to them the story of Ibrahim, when he said to his father and his people, What do you worship? They said, We worship idols, and remain to them devoted. More details about the character of Prophet Ibrahim salam in this regard are given in Surah Al-Nahl, verses 120 to 122, where it says, Indeed, Ibrahim was a virtue personified, devoutly obedient to Allah, focused, and he was not of those who associate others with Allah. Let's go on to verse 37. Our Lord Indeed, I have settled some of my descendants in a valley not cultivated, near your sacred house. Our Lord, that they may establish the Salah, so make hearts of the mankind inclined toward them, and provide for them from the fruits, that they might be grateful. The supplication of Prophet Ibrahim salam continues. Here, he speaks of his obedience towards Allah. He did exactly as was told. He left his wife and son in the vast desert, alone, without any food or water, where they were supposed to establish themselves and spread the message of Allah's oneness. Because of their sacrifices and firm faith, an entire community blossomed, transferring a barren desert into the flourishing city of Mecca, as we know it today. And here, Prophet Ibrahim is asking Allah to make it easy for all his descendants after them, in their mission. As we now know, it became the home of the Quraysh and the Holy Prophet and a destination for pilgrims from across the world who come every year to make themselves firm in their faith. The sacred house is also mentioned in Surah Al-Ma'idah in verse 97 where it says, Allah has made the Kaaba, the sacred house, established for the mankind and the sacred months and the sacrificial animals, and the garlands. So you may know that Allah knows what is in the skies and what is in the earth, 
and that Allah is knowing of all things. Let's go on to verses 38 and 39. Our Lord, indeed, you know what we conceal and what we declare, and not is hidden from Allah anything in the earth and not in the sky. All praise to Allah, the one who has granted me in old age Ishmael and Isaac. Indeed, my Lord is the hearer of the supplication. The supplication of Prophet Ibrahim salam continues, attesting to what he already knew, that nothing can be hidden from Allah. He is the all-knowing. As is also mentioned in Surah Al-Imran in verse 5, where it says, Surely nothing on earth or in the skies is hidden from Allah. If we only become mindful of this fact, we will never be able to do anything wrong as we would have a feeling inside of us always that Allah is watching us. We are also reminded here that Allah answers supplication of sincere and steadfast believers. For Allah, anything is possible, no matter how challenging it may seem. This is also mentioned in the following verses, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 186, where it says, And when my worshippers ask you concerning me, Indeed, I am near. I respond to the supplication of the supplicant when he calls me. So let them respond to me and believe in me that they may be guided. And also in Surah An-Naml in verse 62, where it says, Or who responds to the distressed one when he calls upon him and removes the evil and makes you inheritors of the earth? Is there a deity with Allah? Little do you remember. Let's go on to verses 40 and 41. My Lord, make me an establisher of the Salah, and for my descendants, our Lord, and accept my supplication. Our Lord, forgive me and my parents and the believers in the period will be established the account. These two verses are very popular and often recited during or after Salah as supplication. Here, Prophet Ibrahim salam, is showing his gratitude to Allah for all his blessings. He acknowledges that there is no one but Allah who listens to all prayers and goes on to appeal to Allah for establishing his salah and those of his sons and descendants. He concludes his humble supplication by appealing to Allah to forgive him and forgive his parents and all believers. He asks for their forgiveness to be forthcoming on the day of account when nothing is of benefit to anyone except the good deeds he or she may have done in this life and Allah's forgiveness for what they might have committed or omitted to do. Allah consistently urges us to supplicate to him throughout the Quran. As stated in Surah Ghafir in verse 60, where it says, And said your Lord, Call upon me, I will respond to you. This concludes Ruku 6 of Surah Ibrahim. Let's briefly go over what we discussed. Supplications are central to the faith of true believers, and all the prophets throughout the history of mankind, including Prophet Ibrahim as mentioned in this Ruku, have called upon Allah through supplication for his mercy. As true believers, we must never seek help from any other source except Allah, as a solution to our needs lies only with him. And without invoking the mercy of Allah, our prayers will not be answered. It is essential to remember that Prophet Ibrahim did not rely solely on supplications to solve his problems. Instead, he took action and then made supplications to Allah. This highlights the fact that supplication alone is not sufficient to resolve our issues. We must strive to take action alongside our supplications to achieve the desired results. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the Holy Quran and its true meanings in light of the life and guidance of Prophet Muhammad. Amin. Thank you for joining us for this segment. Until next time. Sadakallahu al-Aliyulazim. Allah speaks the truth. The exalted, the great. Sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi Muhammadiyun wa alihi wa sallam.